my talk is titled On the Outside Looking In. And I am super, super nervous. Um, I, this is going way back, but I grew up uh, in junior high and high school and college even playing the trumpet. And I was pretty good, played with the United States Wind Ensemble and traveled in Europe a bit playing. And I've played in front of big crowds and in front of a lot of people. And this is totally different. <laughs> um, standing up here by myself instead of in a group and being someone that is not a programmer or doesn't code, not in this field at all. The only relation I have is that I get to come in and record a lot of your talks. So anyway, again, I'm really nervous, and this is the first time I've ever spoken. So <laughs> so this is exactly why I love the Ruby community, because of the support that you guys give people. It's this community is definitely different than any of the other communities I've been to or that I've seen as I've um, recorded conferences. So who am I? My name is Cindy Backman, and my email address is cindy at confreaks.com. I'm also on Twitter by at Sinner, and I'm also Okay, I'm also a wife. This is my husband, James, and he actually gets to work with me sometimes and go to different conferences, and I'm really lucky to have that opportunity. I am also a mother. This is my little blended family. Um, my kids are the two on the right, William and Jessica, and James's kids are on the left, Jeremiah and Jordan, and they actually live in Germany with their mom and stepmom. I'm also a biker, and my husband and I belong to a riding club, and they're an extended family. I love them to pieces, and we have a lot of good times together. Riding is a big part of my husband and I's life, um, so much th so that we made it a part of our wedding when we got married last, last September. And our kids love to ride. <laughs> Our kids love to ride as well with us. Um, and then with work, I'm the operations manager for Confreaks. And I was the first full-time employee, and I've been working with them now for two and a half years. And I've been helping record conferences off and on since 2009. So first, a lot of you probably know who this is. It's Ben Ornstein. And I think he's a great speaker. I've learned a lot about presenting from watching him. And as I edit different videos, I learn a lot as well because I get to repeat a lot of talks or parts of talks. <laughs> so I learn things over and over. Um, I'm going to play a clip from Ben's presentation at RailsConf in 2013 for just a minute. It's possible. So here's how it sounds like if I sing when my soft palate is down. I'll sing something like, we write lots of code. And if I instead open it up with my soft palate lifted, it sounds like, we write lots of code. And I think you probably heard a difference right there. And the way to get to that difference, the way to access that soft palate lift is by thinking of yourself as a radio announcer. <laughs> That's the difference between this voice and my normal speaking voice is amount of soft palate lift. I'm adding myself a resonator at the top of that. So would you sing with low clap soft palate, we write lots of code right there? We write lots of code. Good, now open it up, radio announcer style, try again. We write lots of code. Holy crap, you hear the difference. <laughs> Woo! Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> So from Ben and other speakers, but I have learned that it's important to involve your audience. So I would like everyone to stand up for just a moment. Now has anyone heard of tutting or tutting before? Awesome. Okay. So tutting happens to be a type of dance that is done mimicking the positions that people were drawn in during the ancient Egyptian times. So I'm going to show you an example. 
Okay, that looks hard. It's really not that hard, okay? So Ben taught an audience, and it was a huge audience because I was there recording it. He taught the audience how to sing better. And Ben actually leads a 60-man choir on the side. Um, so anyway, instead of teaching you how to sing, we're going to learn this little routine, okay? <laughs> so I just want everyone, you first start with your knees bending and kind of hunch your shoulders over. You guys are awesome. You can sit down. You can sit down. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's why I love the Ruby community. <laughs> You're all so willing to do anything. I love it. Okay, so um, before I started working for Confreaks, I worked for Discover Card as a student loan collections agent, and it sucked. I'm a really nice person, and trying to get people to pay their student loans that are like hundreds of thousands of dollars, once, I didn't realize people spent that much money on school, but like hundreds of thousands of dollars, was not the job for me. And at times I had helped Confreaks record conferences. And I was a single mom. I had gotten a divorce in 2007. And my daughter was one and my son was seven years old. So I did what I had to do. And <clears throat> I was also going to school and had been accepted into a nursing program. But there was a three year wait. So I worked at Discover and worked on the side with Con Freaks. And if you didn't already know, um, the owner of Confreaks just happens to be my brother. <laughs> and uh, I'm such an emotional person. I hate this. Anyway, so my brother is Kobe Ranquist, and I went with him to several conferences and recorded, recorded them. And it had got to the point where he decided he was either going to sell Confreaks or he needed to grow it. And this it's not his main job, you know, this is kind of his side thing. And so I decided that I would quit my job with Discover and work full time for Confreaks. And it's the best decision I've ever made because in January I could have gone into the nursing program, but instead I'm up here. So. <laughs> um, one of the things I enjoy about conferences is all the swag, and I'm sure <laughs> there's, there's some cool stuff in there, but when you go to 28, 30 conferences a year, you get a lot of stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> I've got flash drives, beer glasses, I've listed a bunch of things like pens, flashlights, screwdrivers, mint tins, gum, bags, stress balls, water bottles, beanies, frisbees, screen cleaners, sunglasses, and of course, t-shirts. And the t-shirts, I've had so many of them from sponsors and different conferences. I've given a lot away, and I've also used them to wash my bike and clean my bike. <laughs> so some of them are really good rags. They shine really well. <laughs> but I didn't think I'd ever be, ever be giving a talk at a programming conference, so I had gotten rid of some of them. But I put together just a couple of little videos of um, some of the shirts so you can see some of them maybe oh yeah I didn't realize I've never used keynote before either because I've never done talks and it doesn't show the videos on my screen <laughs> so I won't mention them, but there are some really cool sponsor shirts out there. And then conference t-shirts. There we go.
I wanted to put this year's RubyConf t-shirt on there, but I just went and got it before my talk and decided not to try to hurry and take a picture and add it in. <laughs> so, and of course, stickers. I love stickers. Who doesn't? So I have some of our new concrete stickers. If you want some afterwards, come and talk to me. Um, so have any of you ever felt like you were on the outside? The first six months that I was working full-time with Confreaks, I traveled with Kobe to conferences and learned how to set up our equipment. And we had a lot more equipment back then than we do now. And just learning all of that. And he always introduced me to his friends and colleagues and people that he knew with the conferences. And so it was easy to feel like I was part of it because I was with my brother. I mean, not just my boss, but my brother. And it, it was really cool. Then I went and did my first conference all by myself, and that was Madison Ruby in 2012, and that was scary. And I really felt like I was on the outside because all of a sudden I was in a room with people I didn't know and I had nothing in common with that I thought because I'm not a programmer. And so it was hard, but while I was there, I had the opportunity to hear uh, Leon Gersing. I'm not sure if I said his last name right, but he gave a really good talk there, and I have a small clip that I wanted to play from his talk. I love this quote from Dalai Lama. It says, man, because he sacrifices his health in order to make money, then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he's so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he's never going to die, and then he dies having never really lived. Bless you. I find this to be incredibly sad. I have seen many people, I've met many wonderful people over the years, and they all have taught me something unique. They've all allowed me to see the world in a completely different way. Even a five-minute conversation is enough to take your entire view and just move it a slight bit. Take the time that you want to be the person that you're going to be. Okay. So take the time that you want to be the person that you're going to be. At this conference, the first one I did by myself, I realized that I wanted to be a part of this great community, and that's the Ruby community. It's taken me a long time, in my eyes anyway, and it's not easy to go up to someone. It's not easy for me to go up to someone and just talk to them, especially in this environment, because I'm so out of my league with things. Um, but I decided that I needed to make the effort and try to go up and meet people. And so when you're at a conference, you're there to be a part of something with people that are like-minded and have jobs and interests that are similar to yours. So I really had to step out of my comfort zone to try and do this. Now, after two and a half years of recording co conference talks, <laughs> I have a better understanding of them, but at first a lot of the things people said went right over my head. And I mean way over my head, because when you talk about unicorns, <laughs> this is what I see. And I did not understand, but I did during my talk try to Google some of this stuff and learn a little bit about what things were, and I've learned as I've listened more to the conference talks. Um, but Unicorn is Rack HTTP server for fast clients and Unix, and I read that and I still don't quite understand everything in it, because <laughs> all I see is racks and fast clients and we'll move to factory girls. So this is what I think when I hear factory girls, or factory girl. And what I learned is that factory girl is a library for setting up Ruby objects as test data. And Frappuccino, who does not like Frappuccino? I love Caramel is my favorite, but I learned at Lone Star Ruby um, in 2013 from Steve Klabnik that Frappuccino actually was the most irresponsible code he had written around that time. 
Now we're going to turn this around and you can look at the pictures and tell me what you think that might be in the programming or coding world. If you think of something, go ahead and shout it out. <laughs> Same thing. What is it? What? Cheetah? Oh, no. <laughs> Kittens are cute. And I know everybody likes cats, right? And this one's my favorite. But REST is part of the program. And I don't know what part of the program REST is, but in my daily program, I definitely need definitely need rest <laughs> and with my musical background I just thought this was funny on the internet <laughs> and Wikipedia says representation state transfer is an abstraction of the architecture of the World Wide Web blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so there's chef which I think of chopped or maybe iron chef and shoes women have lots of them or at least I do and crow is a bird. Java is coffee. And it has some beautiful art. I mean, when I, when I looked online, I was like, seriously, look at all this stuff. I loved it. And I was really fascinated with these photos. So I thought you would be too. <laughs> oh, that animation didn't show on my screen, so I skipped it. <laughs> There we go. Okay, does anyone see a dachshund? A little wiener dog face? Okay, that's what my husband sees. I'm glad I'm not the only one that doesn't see it. <laughs> so I just don't get it. Um, a family guy, I don't know his name, but I thought that was pretty cool. Steve? Stewie. Stewie, Stewie. okay. And this is the cutest coffee cat I have ever seen. He reminds me of Gorbachev Puff Puff Thunder Horse the third, <laughs> but he is not quite as grumpy. <laughs> For those of you that might not know who this cat is, it's Aaron Patterson's cat. If you don't know Aaron Patterson, he is on the Ruby Core and the Rails Core teams, and he's in here. <laughs> <laughs> What would Sandy Metz do? <sighs> right now, I'm so nervous, so I, keep, I put this on my hand because she told me this morning, I know what she'd do. She'd keep telling herself, it'll never be this bad again. It'll never be this bad again. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. It'll never be this bad again. <laughs> I love this cat <laughs> in the coffee. <laughs> and if you haven't guessed by now, I'm kind of easily amused. Just cute little things, so. And this one? So cute. It's koi fish, like Koichi Sasada. He wrote Ruby's new virtual machine. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but thank you, Zach, for telling me. <laughs> and thank you, Zach. He listened to most of my talk, and he told me to put that in there. So that's his. <laughs> gem. I think of gems. Or this will date my age. I think of gem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I can put her in her in here because I see My Little Pony slides all the time. <laughs> okay, this is Let Me Code um, by Liana Van Lee, I think is how you say it, RailsConf 2014. Catherine Wu um, speaking on how to build a better junior developer at RailsConf also. This was at Mountain West Ruby or Hack Week last year. No, this year, this year. And that's Paul Reed speaking about DevOps, and he brought his own pony. And through my research for this talk, I researched ponies. And that's Rainbow Dash. Yeah. I know his name. His name? Her name? Her. her. I know her name. So do you. That's so cool. <laughs> All right, and Star, Starhorn, Golden Gate Ruby this year. How about Carrie Miller? She's awesome. She gives really good talks, and I really enjoy her. And this was at Nickel City. I was there last month in October, and she had one, two, three. Actually, I think she had more, but those were the only ones I could find as I skimmed through the video again. But I really like this one because it's how I feel right now. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so. This, I'm going to play a video clip here, and this is Mike Moore. He actually is the organizer for Mountain West Ruby. 
And this talk was given at Ruby on Ls in 2012. But I know the majority of you are like, yeah, it's fun for work, but the best thing about the cloud is that's where Rainbow Dash lives, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Rainbow Dash is the coolest out of all ponies, am I right? And how much cooler? 20% cooler. <laughs> all right, so show of hands, are there any bronies in the audience? One. All right. Everybody else, you might want to go get a beer because it's not going to get any better for you. I get to see a lot of funny talks. It's it's really cool. And as I as I prepared for this at home with my family, um, my husband and I were watching TV and we were watching Storage Wars on A and E. And there was a couple, this was last week, and it's like current right now, you know. They bought a storage unit, and it was full of My Little Ponies. And they had to go find someone that could tell them how much that it was worth and that. And when they went, the lady on there, she's like, no, I know the guys are bronies. Is that everybody? And the guy was so excited to talk to him about ponies. He's like, no, there's bronies and there's Pegasisters. It's like, Pegasisters, that's so cool. Anyway. Okay, so, making connections. Um, if you feel like you're out of your comfort zone or that you're a bit of an introvert or shy when you attend a conference, a great talk to watch is How to Make the Most of a Conference by Corey Haynes. And this one is a clip from LA Ruby in 2013. But we don't have to be that way. You don't have to be shy. You don't have to take that introversion and move it over there. You know, tender love. He just tells it straight up. Don't be shy. There's other words in there, but they're not as important. And so I'm imploring you to take today and really push out of any feeling like you can't go to talk to people. And here's just a picture of Zach. And you look, and it's just like, is she shy? <laughs> Everyone There's loves indeterminate their animal. <laughs> Why isn't she playing with indeterminate animal? That was just a gratuitous picture of Zach. So I do have a challenge that I like to give to people at conferences. When you come here, is always to meet new people. And I like to give a number. I like to tell people, you know what, go meet 10 people, go shake 10 people's hands. It doesn't have to be everyone at the conference, but go find 10 people that you can find something in common with, even if it's just the fact that both your hands are kind of sweaty. <laughs> so I really want to encourage everyone, I want to extend the same challenge that Corey did. You have a day and a half left, or a little bit less than a day and a half, Take the time and meet 10 new people. I, I get really nervous, but I have really made some good friends here, and I love it. And I don't have code to talk about. So there's definitely things you can talk about, and you can go up and meet people, because I think everybody's in the same boat. We just might be sitting in different places, but we're all in the same boat. So this is my slide I made. Just walk up to somebody and say hi. <laughs> use rainbow, f or friendship is magic, so use the magic ponies and friend all the things. <laughs> so my connections, I wanted to talk about them a little bit. I have, well, throughout this whole talk, I have a different perspective, and I have noticed that a lot of people feel that speakers are like superheroes, and that they're super, super special. And they are, but we're all special. And I, it doesn't matter to me what they've done in a programming community because I don't understand it. I don't know what it is, you know? What is important to me is how they treat others. And one of my favorite things is how much support there is and what you guys do with open source to help each other out. And it's not all about, I wanna say me, I don't mean me, but the attitude is not all about me. It's about what you can do for others and helping others out. 
So I just want to share some of the people I've gotten to know and my perspectives on them. Uh, the first one is Coraline M. Key. And I don't remember when I met Coraline, but last year at, no, not last year, this year, at Big Ruby, I had the chance to sit down and talk with Coraline. And I've wanted to uh, present, not really do a talk, but I wanted to do a proposal for one. I didn't think I'd get to actually speak, but I had a goal to do a proposal for one. And I wasn't sure if it would go over very well. And so I talked with Coraline about it one night during this conference, and she was the one that helped me finally decide that, yeah, it would be worth listening to, and people, people would find it funny, probably, some of the stuff I've seen in that. So after my conversation with her, I decided I would do it, and I talked with my brother, and he said RubyConf would be a great one to submit it to because that's the majority of our conferences and I think a lot of you can relate to what I'm saying. And it's because this is the community I love. I've been to a lot of different conferences that aren't, with, aren't Ruby and there's just a different feel here than most of the other ones and I really enjoy it. So Zachary, my husband and I met him in Germany or Belgium at our camp last year and you know we're from America but we met him over there and then we saw him this summer in Singapore and it's pretty cool to be able to see people in different countries when you're both from America you don't get to do that very often just run into someone and Zach is really cool we don't know a lot about him but he's always fun and comes up and talks to us he helped me today with my talk a bit and I just appreciate that type of attitude and that type of person and he has an awesome cat named Ginger that I like to follow or hear about on Facebook. That's, he was shaved and he looks so cool. <laughs> then we have Sarah May. She is so awesome. She's a mother that works really hard and works long hours. She speaks at numerous conferences. She writes, consults, codes, and helps run conferences. And she's now one of the directors for Ruby Central. She is passionate about what she does, and she's always a friendly face for me to see at conferences, and she helps me feel like I'm part of something. And Ron Evans, I don't know how many people know him, but he has so much enthusiasm, and he's just like a kid. He's a great dad, and he's very approachable, and he loves to share his knowledge with people. And I've had the chance to get to know Julian, chill, chill a little bit. I'm <laughs> not sure how you say his last name. But he is really funny. If you've not seen his Dancing with Robot talks, Nickel City on Confreaks.com and Rocky Mountain Ruby, it is an awesome talk. And he loves tweed, loves to wear tweed, even when it's above 70 degrees, he'll wear tweed suits. <laughs> hey, Jonan, Jonan, like Conan. Okay. <laughs> I asked permission or tried to get permission to make sure it was okay with everybody that I talk about him. But to me, he's a little bit crazy. And I think, <laughs> I think you'll feel the same way if you haven't seen this talk. I'm gonna play a clip in a minute. But the first time I heard him talk was at Ruby on Ells. And he, when he introduced himself, showed a picture of Conan and said his name is pronounced just like Conan, but with a J, Jonan. So don't ever forget it. It's Jonan, like Conan. Okay, and this is his... You, uh, because the sponge is so large, the idea is to distribute the current, diffuse the current over a large area. So you don't want to use like pinpoints because it will burn your skin kind of a lot. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's not a lot. It's, it's not going to cut a hole in your head or anything, but it hurts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to you diffuse the current as much as possible. So you'll see a little bit after this, I might have a little bit of a red sponge-shaped mark on my skull. Um, so... What I'm going to apply to my brain here is uh, two milliamps of electrical current. And it's got a vo voltage regulator on here to make sure that it's always pushing uh, two milliamps through my brain. So the voltage will go up and down to ensure that the current traveling through my brain, uh, no matter what the resistance of my brain is, although some people's brains have higher resistance than others, they're a little bit thicker. Um, so when I turn this on, let's see, where did I get my switches? This is really carefully planned, this whole thing. Nothing possibly could go wrong. Okay, I just saw a flash of light. 
come across. Can anyone see the green light on? Yeah? So I saw a flash of light come across my field of vision. It's like a free fireworks display, right? It's practically drugs without any negative health benefits or their effects that we know about. Uh, yeah. That is an awesome talk. If you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. I think he's nuts, but he's, he's funny as heck. He's a good guy. And Brandon Hayes, he is someone that appreciates and knows what it's like to live in Utah. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Because <laughs> that's where I live. So um, he's a funny guy. I'm really sad that he's competing against me right now in the other room. So thank you all for coming to listen to me because I would have been over there listening to him. <laughs> so, but I do, we're recording it so I will get a see his talk and almost likely edit it, so I'll see it several times. <laughs> so Sandy Metz, what would she do? I love her. She is so awesome. She's a biking enthusiast, and she loves to cross-country ski. She writes books about code. She speaks at a lot of conferences. And in 2013 at Lone Star Ruby, um, my son, he was almost 13 years old, got to come with me to record the conference, which is another awesome thing, working for family. I get to take family with me. <laughs> and we, my son and I did the Rellsbridge class before the conference, and he was so excited about code. And he's playing too many video games now, but he still wants to learn to code. But he still talks about Sandy and several other adults that spent almost at least 30 minutes with him, talking to him during the conference. And I just, I appreciate people like that. He, they put an excitement in my son about something that can change him and give him a solid future. And so, thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Jim Remsick, he's cool. He loves to give hugs. <laughs> And I'm really sad. I'm sad that I don't get to go to Madison Ruby anymore. <laughs> but Jim and his wife, Jen, they run Madison Ruby, and, or it's now Madison Plus. And he is very big on community, which is really important. And I know that's in, in this community, too, is your, the Ruby community, is the communities you live in, helping them out. And then, of course, my brother, He's a father of six girls, and there's two sets of twins in there. And he's the owner of Confreaks. He works for Heroku. He organizes LA Ruby, Ruby on L's. Would love to organize a bunch of other conferences, and hopefully sometime we'll get to do those. He has more things going on in his life at one time than any other person I know. And I have been told many times at conferences, people come up to me and tell me what a great boss Kobe is, because a lot of people have worked for him, and I believe them, but he's the best boss for me, and I also get a call him brother. And Aaron Patterson, he's a really funny guy, even when he's not trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> and he has really weird topics that he talks on in his talks. But he is so entertaining, and he loves his cats and gives them really long names. So. But uh, there's always time for cats. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a cat, his name is Gorbachev Puff Puff Thunder Horse, and I like him very much. Uh, but I didn't realize, like, when I, when I got a cat, like, I thought he would be my best friend, and we'd go, like, bicycling stuff together, and, like, <laughs> go to the park and swimming and all that, but instead he just sleeps all the time, so whenever I take photos of him, he's always just yawning. Like, that's basically it all the time. So <laughs> it's kind of disappointing, but I love him anyway. And you can follow him on Twitter. His Twitter address is Gorby... Gorby Puff. I cut it off before you got to say it. Gorby Puff. <laughs> Aaron's cool. <laughs> and I feel like I know him better than I actually do. <laughs> because I have seen so many of his talks. <laughs> and I feel that way about... <laughs> 
I f- <laughs> My family knows you too. <laughs> no, it's, I feel like I know a lot of the speakers better than I do because I get, I get to listen to their talks and sometimes I have to search for personal email addresses um, if we have technical problems because that happens and I need slides or something, and it's amazing how hard it is to find someone's email address sometimes, and I don't like to bug conference organizers if I can find it myself. So I look on link, linked up, LinkedIn, not linked up, <laughs> LinkedIn, <laughs> and Facebook and Twitter and other things like that, and then I get to read little bits and pieces about them, you know, so I know you, but you don't know me. <laughs> So Aaron is also the starter of Friday Hugs, and every Ruby conference I go to, if it's on a Friday, they do the Friday Hug. And this was Ruby on Ills this year, 2014. And I was talking to my husband one night, and because of my searching on the internet for people's email addresses, and I do that with the marketing too to try to get new conferences, I told him that I feel like a stalker, in my eyes, this is what I saw, like sneaky and stealth-like. In my husband's eyes, he thought of this. <laughs> and then he said, you know, maybe you're not really a stalker, but you're being a detective, so now I think of myself as this. And I feel I'd be missing a big part of the Ruby community if I didn't talk about Jim Wyrick for a moment, I practiced this a bunch of times because I didn't want to cry. Um, Jim was one of the first people I met before I started working for Con Freaks full time. And from the very first time I met him, he remembered my name and my kids' names and what was going on. Every time I saw him at a conference, he picked up where we had left off. And it was something, it was something special to me because it's been hard for me to do conferences on my own, and this is super hard, but I know a lot of people understand it. In this field, there's a lot of intro, introvert-type personalities, and it's not an easy thing to do. And Jim embodied the spirit of the Ruby community. And this year, um, when I was at Big Ruby Conference, that's when Jim passed away. And I remember the morning before the conference started when we got the news, and as com conference attendees started getting the news, it was amazing to me to see the change in the whole atmosphere of the conference. It just became sad. And I took a little bit of time and Googled Jim and found his last commit on GitHub. And I couldn't believe how many comments were already on there of what an amazing person he was. And there's just, there's some comments. I actually got these off of a video that was made and dedicated to him, and you can find that on confreaks.com too. But they're just comments about Jim and how I feel the Ruby community is and that we can all benefit from being more like Jim. And I'm just gonna let everybody read these on their own.
And I did not know this, but it's Jim's birthday today. And um, I just thought it would be neat to all wish him a happy birthday. So on the count of three, if you'll wish Jim a happy birthday with me. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Jim. So I really encourage everyone to go out and meet 10 new people and friend all the things with your magic ponies. Thank you. Um, this is a song that uh, I took an old, old, old tune and put some new words to it for Why Day last month. Why Day is a celebration of all the things that uh, why the lucky stiff gave us, and I wrote some crazy code that day, and at the end of the day, I had an hour or two extra, so I wrote a code about how Rubius love to take, they love their language, they love writing coding, they love to take their programs around and show other people, and they go around saying, hey, has anybody seen my code? You wanna see it? So this is, has anybody seen my code? Well, let's try again. You start playing, I'll join in. I'm the backup band. Nice and small, works for all. Ruby is my all in all. Has anybody seen my code? Cleans and tax, runs on Mac. Ruby has what others lack. Has anybody seen my code? Now when I worked in Java, I worked hard every day. EJBs, NFTs, Spring D, I got in my way. But now I know that for sure. Ruby is my Java cure. Has anybody seen? my code but now i know that's for sure ruby is my java cure has anybody seen my anybody seen my anybody seen my code. 